Good morning Riverside and welcome along to this Sunday service. It's so good to have you along and I just hope God is really blessing you in these random times. Uh, isn't it good, you know, that we have the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ to uh, be our comfort, to be our minister, to be our, the one that's alongside to help. I just want us to uh, sing a couple of songs this morning and I just really encourage you just to lift up your hands, to dance around your lounge or to do whatever uh, you think is appropriate for this service this morning. But whatever happens, I just pray that God blesses you. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love. Last he has ransomed me, oh his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Whom the Son sets free, oh is free indeed. I'm a child. forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say that I am. You who you say that I am. Forsaken, I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say that I am. Yes, I am who you say that I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Oh, yes, Lord, we just thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you that we are children of the living God. We are the children of the one that loves us, the one that died for us, the one that came to live a life and then die that we might be set free. Lord, we just want to say this morning, we're so grateful that we're safe in the palm of your hand. Nothing can take us out of the palm of your hand. Lord, we're safe with you. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord. love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy. 
Mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will see of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness Love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived. All my life you have been faithful and All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able I will live in the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. I will see of the goodness of God. I will see of the goodness of God. Yes, Lord, your goodness, Lord, you've always been good to us. Lord, you've always kept us safe. Lord, even when it was dark, Lord, your word was a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. And Lord, it will always be that because that's who you are, Lord. You're the light of the world. Lord, we're just so grateful for your faithfulness. All my life you have been faithful and All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God I will see of the goodness Just take a moment now and just think of those times when God's been so faithful to you. You felt so alone, but you know He's been there. 
He's been there with you. He's always been there. Hallelujah. He always will be. Thank you, Lord. Praise your mighty name, dear God. Hi, Riverside. Welcome to Riverside Online yet again. If I could just ask you to take a moment, let's just where you're standing or sitting, just lift up your hands to the Lord and just join with me in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you that uh, you are a good, good Father, and we thank you that your love, your love has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom you've given us. And Father, your love has changed our lives, Lord. Your love has brought healing to our hearts. Your love settles us. Your love is pure. Your love is real love. It's the thing that we've been searching for all our lives. Your love is uh, sweet. And Father, we thank you that we've received your love by the Holy Spirit. And right now, as hands are lifted up in the lounges and dining rooms right around North Canterbury, Father, I ask that you pour out a fresh infilling of your love, your love into our hearts right now, by the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we would know how much you really do love us. And everybody said, Amen. Let it be. Thank God for his love. Amen. No, no, no. That's it. Ruby was about to press stop. Well, I've got a little bit more to go yet. Welcome, Riverside. Great to have you on online again. I'm actually really enjoying doing Riverside online because I get to see, or we all get to see, different people chipping in and making it happen. And it's actually seeing the church work uh, through a different lens. But what you see is the church uh, working effectively when every part does its share. So it's really exciting, actually. And uh, it's amazing to think we're 10 days into the lockdown and we've got 17 days to go. Um, so we're nearly halfway. But uh, just to let you know um, a couple of the things that have been happening in the Hales household this week. Uh, there's never a dull moment in the Hales household when, the, when lockdown is on, I can tell you. Uh, just a couple of things, and you'll see these photos pop up. But uh, Ruby turned our barbecue table and chairs into a, a makeshift rabbit hutch for her rabbit Hazel. She loves her Hazel, so you can see her there with her hutch, which was pretty cool. I just walked out and it's like, hey presto, there's all our stuff being put to good use. And also, probably like the rest of you, we have eaten a lot over the last week. And uh, the girls made... I think it was the girls that might have been Paris made a beautiful slice out of marshmallows and condensed milk with rice bubbles and stuff. So uh, you can that was just beautiful. And that's the last two pieces of that photograph right there before it got demolished. We've been scrapping over it. And then Rachel pipes up and says, hey, let's make some homemade ice cream, which uh, has not helped anybody in terms of their weight at all. But um, it was a beautiful honeycomb ice cream. And then here's a photo of Mathis um, practicing his basketball dunking, uh, just getting into it. And also we went for a walk through the trees. It was actually really cool to walk through the trees, just walk and talk as a family, uh, talked about the things of the Lord and just different things as a family, which was quite a lot of fun. And last but not least, we also have a new addition to the Hales family. Isaac found a lizard in the, in the garden and he gave it to Mathis. And this lizard is called Lightning. So Lightning is our latest addition to the family. Um, so I am so excited to have Lightning as a part of the family, in addition to the six birds, the chicken, and the rabbit. So welcome Lightning to the house. So that's a little bit of our uh, life in the last week. Full on, never a dull moment. But right now, we've got Caroline. Uh, she is um, going to do a little skit here for the kids. So everybody sit down, relax. This is called Standing Firm in Tough Times. Standing Firm in Tough Times. Here we go. Thank you. Budget Bible Productions presents The Wise and Foolish Builders. Jesus tells a story about two builders, one who was wise. Hello, I am very wise and another builder who wasn't so wise. Um, guess I'm not so wise. Now the wise builder decided to build their house on some rocks. Um, I know I will build my house on handy looking rocks. Oh, whoops. 
The foolish builder decided to build his house on sand. I know, I'll build my house on this incredibly useless sand. That'll be a good idea. Do 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 do. Now the problem was, there was a storm, and the waters raged and the wind blew, and it got really rough and really terrifying, and because the house was built on sand, well it just kind of fell over. But the house on a rock was a different story. The waves came and the winds roared, but no matter how bad it got, because the house was built on such solid rock foundation, it just kept standing, and kept standing, and kept standing. It was amazing. So, in the story, Jesus wasn't really talking about buildings and rocks and sand. Instead, he was talking about our lives, which are like the buildings, and what we build our lives on. So, the rocks like Jesus when we do what he says. It's like building our life on something solid when hard stuff happens we're okay. But if you build your life on something shonky that doesn't stand up, like worrying about what your friends think or being successful or anything that kind of just doesn't last, then this kind of happens. Not pretty, eh? So remember, when life gets tough, remember God's promises in his word, the Bible, and follow his instructions. You'll be okay. Here's some examples to think about. that Jesus is looking after you even if everything's different. It's okay. Oh. oh no! We've run out of toilet paper again! <laughs> Don't roll over! The Bible says you. Jesus is looking after you. Made a way you go. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, a face kiss. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well done, Caroline. There's, she's so good at that, isn't she? Like, and, and, and like she's saying, the foundation of our lives is key for us to stand, stand generally, but also to stand is particularly through tough times. So well done, Caroline. Um, right now, we're going to hear Rachel preach the second of her message uh, in, the, in the series, Send the Fire. There's, this is her second message. And on Thursday of this week, um, I received an email from the... Um, the National Office of the Assemblies of God Movement. And this email went out to 225 pastors around our nation. And it just seems as though uh, God is speaking to us about drawing near to God and being filled with the fire of God. And this is what the National Secretary wrote in his email, word for word. And, and the capitals in the email are his. I haven't put the, this in capitals. This is what he put in capitals out to the movement on Thursday of this week. Um, he says, God seeks those who are red hot for him. I know some people who like their cup of coffee extra hot. In fact, they will make sure that they say to the barista that this is what they want. And they are even willing to take their coffee back if it's not hot enough. And in some ways, God is like that. He does not want his people lukewarm. He does not want his people complacent or just going with the flow. He wants his people on fire for him. And anything less than this will not do. And to be on fire we must draw near to the fire, for our God is indeed a consuming fire. All right, so it seems as though God is speaking to us at this time. So here is Rachel preaching her word called Why We Need the Fire. God bless. Welcome, everybody. Uh, it's great to have you joining me today. I uh, hope you're getting all comfy again in your homes uh, to hear an awesome word of God. Uh, today, I'm going to be speaking about uh, the second part of Send the Fire. Uh, it's called Why We Need the Fire. So if you've missed the first part of that, then you can go on to Facebook uh, and check that out. And I was speaking about what God was talking to me about, what's 
happening uh, in the natural about the fires and and uh, that uh, there's a spiritual holy fire coming and and he's just uh, giving us a gentle reminder as a church to um, that he wants to purify his church and purify his hearts our hearts and uh, so this week uh, it's going to be awesome we're going to talk about why we need the fire as I say and because uh, I believe um, that there's going to be a significant move uh, of the Holy Fire, of the Holy Spirit. And and we have had revivals in the past and like the holy laughter and things like that. But this is going to be a holy fire that God's sending upon uh, the church and upon um, our nation and the world today. Uh, It's coming. So in 2 Peter 3, uh, God talks about how he holds back his all-consuming fire of judgment um, and that's so that none, he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So that's really God's heart for this holy fire, that all should come to repentance and know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, because he is coming back again and uh, he's coming back soon. Uh, so I'm going to talk from Daniel. So if you've got your Bibles, get ready. I'll just give you a minute. If you've forgotten, just grab those pen and paper and jot down some notes. So Here we go. So everybody knows about the story of Daniel. And uh, so Daniel uh, was in um, Babylon. He was in exile and he was actually working for King Nebuchadnezzar. And so Daniel had actually interpreted uh, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And uh, him, him and his friends had been promoted to be rulers and administrators. So they were quite high up there. But King Nebuchadnezzar, as you knew, he decided that he would make a gold image and that he would want uh, everybody to bow down and worship uh, that gold image. Uh, So we're going to pick this story up in Daniel chapter 3. So if you turn to Daniel chapter 3, verse 4. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages. So just take note of that. Uh, oh, peoples, nations, and languages that went out to everyone. That at the time you hear the sound of the music, sorry, I skipped all of the types of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So here's Daniel's uh, faith. It was really tested uh, by the fire of God at this time. And uh, our faith also, it says in the Bible, uh, is going to be tested by fire. In 1 Peter 1.7, it says, The genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honour and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, so our faith is going to be tested also. The, so the story continues that Daniel... Uh, he would not bow, bow down to the image, uh, the gold image. And uh, and uh, <laughs> um, this is his reply to Nebuchadnezzar. I love this reply in Daniel 3, verse 17. If that is the case, because uh, Nebuchadnezzar was going to throw him in the fire, he said, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we serve the gold image which you have set up. And uh, I thought that was awesome, you know, um, even though that uh, Daniel was going to be put in the fiery furnace, that's what Nebuchadnezzar had ordered. He was, uh, he trusted God in that. And even in that, he just said, okay, God, you know, if it is so, then I still will not bow down to any other image or any other God. And uh, I just think that's a wonderful declaration that we can have today, uh, especially what we're going through, uh, that, that, you know, my God whom I serve, is able to deliver me from the fiery trials of Satan. You know, whatever you're going through or even in this coronavirus, you know, we we can trust God that he will deliver us from this. Uh, but then we can go on and say, but but if not, let it be known to you, devil, that uh, I will not serve your God or your idols or worship your image. So sometimes that we've got to realize that God does not deliver us from uh, the fire. And uh, but 
but in that we can still trust God uh, and um, not serve the images or the idols of Satan. So Daniel 3, 19, we're going to continue on. Uh, verse 19, Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the exp- expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Now, I just look at that that piece of scripture and I think, you know, uh, here's Nebuchadnezzar, picture of the world, picture of Satan, and he was full of fury. Uh, and Satan is full of fury towards us, uh, the uh, the church, towards us, because we are the saints of Jesus Christ. So he, he is not happy with us. So just remember, there's a lot of fury coming and we know that it's going to heat up. And uh uh, he's, the, the furnace was heated seven times hotter than normal. And last year, actually, God spoke to me about that. When he was talking about the holy fire that was coming, I felt like he whispered in my spirit that it was going to be seven times hotter. Now, Satan's a counterfeit. He, he, he's not original. Uh, so he, he just counterfeits everything of God, and he just heated that up seven times hotter. But but trusting God, his fi- holy fire is going to be seven times hotter hotter. Uh, but but seven is, the number seven in biblical terms is means completion. It means perfection. So it's going to be a perfect heat. Uh, and because uh, you need the perfect environment, the perfect heat to pure, for purification process uh, to happen. So praise God that if Satan starts putting the heat up, turning the heat up, then God also is going to turn his perfect heat up also. And uh, So verse 20, and he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Bendigo. Sorry if I pronounce those names wrong. And cast them into the burning fiery furnace. These men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the fiery, burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, The furnace and the furnace exceedingly hot. The flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Uh, And last week, you notice that I uh, talked about a word that God placed in my heart, you know, get close enough to the fire and you will be burnt, if not consumed. Uh, And uh, these evil men tried to... um, Uh, get rid of or distinguish uh, God's holy men. And uh, they were the ones that actually got too close to the fire and were consumed. So uh, I thought that was pretty awesome. Get close enough to the fire and uh, you may even be consumed. So the king uh, and these three men, so Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counsellors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of God. And I just, uh, when I was preparing this message, God really, I've never really uh, had that part highlighted to me reading the message. It's always really about Daniel and the fire and that God's in the midst of the fire with him, which is really encouraging. But God really drew this out uh, in the word for me and the Holy Spirit really spoke to me about this. Uh, that Nebuchadnezzar, uh, remember he's a picture of the world, he's lost, he doesn't know Jesus, he doesn't know God as his, as his personal saviour like Daniel and his friends. And here he was looking into the midst of the fire and he not only saw Daniel, the three of, three of them in there, he saw Jesus because he said, you know, the fourth was like the son of God. So he actually recognized that God, Jesus was in the fire. It's like that the blindness had come off his eyes. His eyes had been open to see and he had a revelation that Jesus of God at that point. Because he said he didn't know Jesus, but there he said that he was like the son of God and he is a recognizing. So part of us being in fiery uh, trials and, and where we are and with Jesus in us is actually not just for us. It's not just that that we get through this and Jesus is with us. It's about the lost. It's about um, people who don't know Jesus that can look into our lives and they can recognize that here we are going through a storm or going 
going through a fiery trial and not only the uh, in there is is another person called Jesus and it's like sometimes that can open up their eyes to the fact that that our God is with us and that he delivers us uh so I felt like God was sending um yeah, but just by his Holy Spirit was just reminding him that it's not always about us because God's heart is that none shall be lost. So he wants to open up the eyes of the lost through through what we go through sometimes and it's not always easy. Uh, so here we know that Nebuchadnezzar uh, praises God because his eyes were open. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke saying Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego servants of the most high God come out and come here then Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego came from the midst of the fire and the satraps, administrators, governors and the king's counsellors gathered together and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power the hair on the head was not singed nor their garments affected the smell of the fire was not on them and Nebuchadnezzar smoke, spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. And hear this, church, this is what Nebuchadnezzar said in verse 29, Therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces and the houses shall be made an ash heap. Because there is no other God who can deliver like this. So the fire wasn't um, just about uh, testing Daniel's faith. Uh, and I believe that God wants to highlight that. It was it was about the gospel. It was about, because um, remember that um, uh, uh, in Daniel's time, here's Nebuchadnezzar sending a decree out to all peoples, nations, and languages that there is no other God who can deliver. And it's about the gospel going out that there is no other savior but Jesus Christ. It's the same message back then as it is today, that God wants to get out to the people that are going to perish at the end, perish at the end of the age that don't know him. So I find this really exciting that even in the story uh, that it's about the gospel, you know, the fire is vital here to show um, to, to sow the gospel and to expand the kingdom of God. And this is what really it was all about, I believe, uh, and not just Daniel's faith. So I'm going to share a powerful illustration now about why we need the fire uh, for our own lives. And uh, I remember that um, you know, God uses a lot of... Um, he uses a lot of natural illustrations uh, to give a parallel of spiritual meaning. So this is, you'll see a natural illustration that I'm giving right now, and this, I'm going to give a spiritual meaning as well with it. So a lot of you will know um, about sequoia trees. Uh, if you don't know about sequoia trees, they're actually, we refer to them as redwood trees so if you can think of a redwood tree as I'm explaining this you'll know what I'm meaning and they're massive trees they're like giant trees uh, and in California they have parks of these trees now a couple of hundred years ago the rangers decided uh, that whenever there was a lightning strike and a fire would begin in the park uh, in the forest that they would put out that fire because they were afraid uh, the trees would go up in smoke and they'd lose all of their beautiful sequoia and redwood trees that are uh, hundreds and thousands of years old. Uh, so they actually did this for about a hundred years uh, in California in the National Park uh, and what they discovered after that time, they, uh, they kept dis distinguishing all of the fires, is that there was no new baby sequoia trees uh, coming up and springing up and growing uh, from there. And so they learnt their lesson uh, not to um, put out the fires here. So we can... Um, glean a lot from that. The, the sad thing about that, that example is that over those years, over those hundred years that they had it wrong, they actually lost generations 
of baby sequoias, like just it wiped out generations. There was just no new growth and new life coming through. And so we can glean from this. The first thing I wanna talk about is number one is that giant sequoias depend on fire for growth. And like, we are also dependent on the fire of the Holy Spirit for growth. Without the fire of the Holy Spirit, it, we're stunted. We just don't grow. There is no growth. Those uh, people in the Bible, they're the religious leaders, people that didn't have the fire of the Holy Spirit, there was no growth there. Um, they really just um, uh, was just dead. It just nothing happened and nothing moved. So it says in First Thessalonians 5.19, do not quench the Spirit. So we're not to quench the Holy Spirit. Number two, the heat of the fires opened the sequoia seed cones and the seeds were released. So what you're gonna remember is uh, in a sequoia tree, they have these seed cones, they're about as big as uh, an egg. And uh, the cones are very hard the, uh, and the cones hold the seeds within them. And so what happens is without the fire, uh, the cones weren't able to release the seed because uh, the fire would soften the cones and uh, then heat up the cones and then the seeds were able to be released. And it's like our hearts, our hearts can actually, without the fire of the Holy Spirit, our hearts can become hardened with indifference, with sin, with offenses, with uh, unforgiveness. And God has placed seeds within our heart. I really felt he was wanting me to share that. It's not only there's seeds that he's put uh, in our spirits before the foundation of the world began, that he, uh, before we were even born, when we were born, he placed seeds within our spirit uh, and he wants those seeds to be released. He wants those seeds to be grow, to grow uh, and our, for our lives to grow. There's also seeds of the gospel of Jesus Christ and those seeds within us of the good news uh, need to be released. If we've got hardness of heart, if we're indifferent and really ho-hum about world, the world and we're just going along and not really sensing the urgency that there's people out there, uh, millions of people out there that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour uh, and who's, who are heading for eternal death um, because our hearts are just hard and indifferent, then then those seeds of the gospel won't be released. So it's really important for the fire. The fire is vital to release the seed. And the fire of the Holy Spirit opens things up, softens us, frees us, and releases the seed within us. Acts 1 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Because that's God's heart for us. We are to receive power with the, with the help of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us to be witnesses about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because God's heart is that none would perish and all would come to repentance. Uh, Acts Two, this is when the fire, uh, the tongues of fire came and fell upon um, the 120 on the upper room. And uh, we're going to read from there in Acts 2, verse 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they appeared to them, then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So after that happened, um, there was a big, large crowd uh, gathered outside, and Peter went outside uh, and he began to, to speak to the crowd, he began to preach to the crowd. Uh, and it was preaching the gospel. Uh, and what happened was, as you know, in Acts 2, 41, then those, uh, the, sorry, the people were actually um, cut to the heart and they cried out, you know, what shall we do? Uh, so this is, this is what happens when the manifest presence of God's holy fire falls. Uh, there's a conviction of the heart. And uh, Acts 2, 41, those 
who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Uh, this is Holy Fire Revival Church. This is exciting. The fire of the Holy Spirit released the seed, and 3,000 new baby Christians were born that day. Another reason the sequoia trees rely on fire uh, is that the flames clear the earth for the seeds to germinate and so that the light uh, is able to come into those new seeds. And I just, uh, so in a, in a park setting, there's a lot of scrub, a lot of dead wood and a lot of things that fall to the ground. Also a lot of uh, sh shrubs maybe, uh, weeds that grow up around uh, the trees and, and, and the bush floor. And uh, if the seeds were released, were to be released and they fell on all of that, then they weren't able to germinate in good soil. So the importance I feel like the, that God wants to do to our hearts uh, and to the church is actually for his holy fire to burn up all of that rubbish that we collect uh, in our hearts and like that could be just uh, the cares of the world it could be just worldly things you know um, wanting to spend all of our days doing up our homes and doing you know putting all of our efforts in, into things that are just uh, really don't um, have any fruit uh, and burning up all of that excess burning up anything that's hindering us and hindering the seed uh, that he has was inside of us from growing and uh, so uh, the uh, importance of burning up all of that as well inside of us is allow the light to come in. You know, when we have all of that stuff around us, uh, the, the Holy Spirit, the light is it's blocking the light and blocking the glory of God to touch our hearts. And uh, so it's exciting. Just allow God to do that. It's holy fire. It's really um, awesome. You know, Thinking back to our last sermon, you know, what William both uh, said in his song, he said, um, you know, the fire of God is needed to burn up every trace of sin. And I think of all the rubbish and most importantly, to allow God's light and glory in. And so fire clears the ground, church. God is sending his cleansing fire for, uh, to cleanse the land and cleanse and purify our, our hearts uh, that's because he wants to produce a crop. He wants, um, the, what, he, he's coming back for the harvest. He's coming back for the crop. And uh, number four, while all of the dead wood and all of that shrub and all of that stuff gets burnt up, um, the sequoia trees or the redwood trees, uh, they go unscathed. So the fire could be raging around these massive giant trees and burning up everything and consuming everything on the ground level, uh, which would be quite frightening. But they actually are standing there tall and beautiful and they go unscathed. They are remarkably fire resistant. Uh, so the thing about those trees is their bark is thicker than any other tree. Uh, and I just think of Daniel uh, in the fire, like he couldn't avoid the fire. Uh, they actually, God had a purpose and a plan for that fire. He had a bigger picture for that fire. The fire was actually important for uh, the decree to go out to all peoples, nations and languages that, that God was able to deliver. And so being in the fire actually makes us fireproof. Isaiah 43, 2 says, When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt, nor shall the flame scorch you. Another point is that when the flames die down, the earth is ready for a new generation of giant sequoias. Be ready, church, uh, because I just really believe that uh, there's going to be, um, God's really going to release the seeds of the gospel and the church needs to be ready uh, to be prepared for the new sons and daughters that are going to be swept into the kingdom of God uh, and um, where to to help them grow uh, so the churches are going to grow Luke 12 49 says I came to send fire on the earth and the Lord said how I wish it were, it were already kindled 
uh, is the fire kindled? Is the fire kindled in your hearts today? Is the fire kindled in your churches? Uh, is, there fire, is there fire for the lost that, that's kindled today? You know, God is getting his church ready for revival, I believe. And it's not, um, like I say, a laughing uh, uh, revival or even a bless me revival. It's, it's a holy fire revival to cleanse the land, to soften the hearts and release the seeds of the gospel. Um, Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not, is not my word like a fire, says the Lord. You know, the word of God is on fire. You know, that's to set our hearts on fire so we can go and set the world on fire. This is his, his heart. Matthew 24, 12 to 16. And this gospel, gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. Are you ready for revival, church? It's going to be intense. I'd already written my message and uh, I was looking for a book for the children to read, uh, getting all inspired by um, the lockdown and getting the kids uh, reading. And I came across a book uh, that was written by Michael L. Brown. And he talked about, and I'd already read this before in Smith Wigglesworth book, how in 1922, Smith Wigglesworth came to New Zealand and he was having a prayer meeting in Wellington. Uh, and what happened was when he, when he rose to seek uh, the Lord, I'll read this out, the presence of God began to fill the room. Soon the glory of God became terrible. The light became too bright, the heat too intense, and the other men couldn't take it any longer. Every one of them left the room. Only Wigglesworth could continue in the midst of the Shekinah. And Michael uh, L. Brown goes on to say, that is the presence of God that comes with revival. It becomes unbearably intense. Its light breaks through the darkness. Its heat raises the temperature all around. It cannot be localized or confined. And I talked about that last uh, week about uh, the Holy Spirit fire that cannot be contained and cannot be controlled uh, and uh, and it's going to be amazing. So just leave you with this last word that I had, the old will be burnt up, the new will come, behold I am doing a new thing. So church, uh, i just like to pray with you everybody and um, uh, so we just bow our heads and just commit this in prayer uh, to the Lord. So Father, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we just, we look to you. We give you the glory. It's about you, Lord. It's about your glory. It's about um, God. It's about your deliverance. It's about your salvation. It's about Jesus uh, that came and died for us. Lord, we just thank you, Father, that uh, even in the midst of the trials and the fiery uh, trials that we go through, Lord. Lord, that we just thank you and we trust you that you are with us in that. Father, we just pray, Lord, that you will soften our hearts, Lord, that we'll be able to uh, shine your light on us, send your holy fire to burn up that which is uh, all the rubbish and all the stuff that is built up over around our hearts, Lord. Lord, Father, so we can release that seed, Lord. We can be all that you've called us to be and everything you've placed in our hearts, Lord, will be released, Lord God, and begin to grow. And all of the seeds of the gospel, we just pray, will be released, Lord, that the church will release the seeds of the gospel that Jesus Christ saves, Lord, that you died on the cross, Lord, that people might be saved, Lord. So, Father, we just seal this in prayer, Lord, and we just thank you uh, for your goodness, and we trust in you, and we just ask that you send the fire today in Jesus' name. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just want to give you this opportunity uh, to invite him into your heart. So, uh, if you feel that there's been something stirring in your heart and, and you've been feeling a little bit uncomfortable, and it's just God that's working on your heart. He's, he, he's, he's calling you today. He's, he's, uh, he's, he has an invitation for you today to come into his king, out of the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom of light. He loves you. And so um, if you'd like to just join me with this prayer, uh, if you'd like to give your heart to Jesus Christ today, I'd like to lead you through that now. And uh, so you can just say after me these words. 
Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God and you died on the cross for me. I repent of my sins. Forgive me for my rebellion and for going my own way. I invite you, Jesus, into my heart today to be my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Awesome. If you've said that prayer uh, and you've got people around you at home, I'd encourage you um, to get around that person and pray for them and encourage them and, and um, give them some, some words and, and help them in their new journey with Jesus. So Barry's going to lead us in a worship song. It's going to be awesome. And uh, so thank you for everyone for, um, for uh, hearing uh, this, this word that God's put on my heart, these two words. And uh, yeah, so at the end of uh, Barry's song, uh, lots of people requested the William Booth song, Seeing the Fire Today. So we have, we're going to put that at the end. And if you'd like to just... Uh, sit and listen to that and sing along to that then that's awesome as well so thank you everybody see ya thank you rachel for such a wonderful word it's so good isn't it team that we've got such a wonderful uh, pastoral team in our church and, and i just hope you feel loved and cared for and that that message that rachel has just given today will just really speak to your heart <laughs> For God so loved the world That He gave His only Son Whosoever believes will not perish They shall have eternal life For God shall hold to the cross I shall hold to God alone for his love has salvaged me for his love has set me
just commit our week to you. Lord, we ask that you would take us and use us for your glory. Lord, I just pray for, I pray for our church now. I pray for everyone that's listening to this message. Lord, that you would pour out your spirit upon us, that you would pour out your spirit upon your church, that you would raise up your church, Lord, and make them strong. Make us strong, Lord, that you would raise up a people that is called by your name, that is washed in your blood, that has the full armor of God on. And Lord, that you would show us, Father, your goodness and your kindness, that we might teach others, that we might share it with others, that we might show others that you are alive and well in this world today. Lord, I pray, God, your blessing upon our church, your blessing upon everyone that listens to this message, your blessing upon our, our, our neighborhood and our district, Lord, and that you would reign sovereign in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Church, be blessed. Go in the peace of God. And may the Lord truly be Lord to you this week. God bless. Bye-bye. Oh God of burning, cleansing flame.